content podcast this is a uh, quite a special podcast for me to be honest it's been one that i've i've been desperate to get over the line and, and i'm sure this uh this next guest will tell you how much i've been annoying him to get onto this podcast but considering how busy he is it's been quite difficult to sort of marry our uh our schedules up but i'm glad to say that i finally got him on the podcast mr dan crowley daniel how are we mate you all okay yeah i'm good thank you thank you for having me it's always good to see, you know, the, the people that you did did grow up with and did know back in the day, you know, look anyway as if they've had they've had a really good and happy life so far. So how's everything off the pitch going for you? Yeah, no, it's all good. Um, I'm married now um, and got a little boy who's two and a half, and my missus is expecting another one in July. Um, we're having a little girl, so proper settled down. Um, yeah, really happy. Life's good. Um, feel really blessed and it's funny how you you chat about us um when we were younger I had no idea that you were into football and like this kind of stuff and doing podcasts and obviously you're on talk sport now so it's really cool when I seen it on your Instagram um it was really cool to see no, honestly I appreciate that a lot obviously for someone who's had the career that you've had and you know, gone to the places that you have. For someone like you to say that to me is uh, it's massively appreciated, mate. Um, just quickly before we get into the questions and stuff, you've obviously got a little boy now. Um, and, and the first question I'm sure you've been asked with your background, with you being a footballer, is there any pressure on the little one or or even the one that's going to be coming, the little girl now? Is there going to be any pressure on your kids to follow your footsteps or, or, or are you not really like that? It's a funny one, to be fair, because... Obviously, I know what footballers go through on like a day-to-day basis and how just up and down their careers are. And, you know, a lot of people do think like the footballers, you know, lifestyle is great, but it is really difficult. Like, obviously, I'm living away from my family like a few days a week um, since I've joined for Morecambe because they're still back home in Cov and um, it's just too far to commute. So I stay in a hotel. Um, so I don't get to see them as much as... Um, I want to see them and obviously with like you know not some players don't have contracts or they get injured like it's a really hard um sport to be in mentally um so it's not all that it's made out to be so it's a funny one really like he 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 really enjoys it already um and he's actually decent and it's weird saying that at two and a half um but you can tell you can see it you can see it with the kids straight away how they run um how how he's on his toes um, how he kicks it. Um, so it's nice for us to have that bond, you know, and that, um, you know, if he if he enjoys it and obviously I enjoy it, we'll have that connection on it. Um, so it'll be nice in that way, but I'd never force him. Whatever he wants to do, whatever makes him happy, you know, I'll just support him. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's probably the perfect answer you you could have given there, mate. You've uh, you've certainly learnt the the art of parenting, haven't you? But uh, you know, you, you mentioned obviously about the the mental side of things, which I do really want to get into. You know, as you say, from the outside, people will look at social media and think, you know, he, he's played for this team, he's played for that team, he's gone to this country, all that kind of thing. But I don't think really there's enough light that's been shed on on the sort of dark side, really. But we will get into that. What I, what I did really want to start with was obviously right at the start of your journey. Um, obviously, you were at a, a small club called Arsenal. Um, it was it was the start of your journey, really, wasn't it? If 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 I'm not mistaken, and you know, you you were I believe you were still at school then as well. So could you just take us through what it was like, not only to be at such a big club at, at a young age, but how did how did you cope with it personally? Obviously, with the pressure, with the glitz and glam, basically at a, at an age where you were still a kid. Um. It's a tricky one, really. I actually didn't enjoy it at Arsenal. Um, I, I struggled there um, mentally. Um, I didn't get on with the coaches. And, um, like, being this, like, young lad from, like, Coventry and then um, and then going to Arsenal, it's, like, and obviously all the boys are from London. And that's hard in itself, like, integrating with with the lads. Like, the lads were great, like, great lads, but just, like, just from completely different sides like not of the country but just in ways of like how I am and how like lads were brought up you know being from London and it was just like getting to know them and understand them um, and obviously them for me so that was tricky at the start 
but yeah, with with I didn't get on with the youth team coaches and the reserve coaches. Um, for some reason, we just really clashed, um, and I just didn't enjoy it. I didn't enjoy my football. Um, I was playing with the. So the problem was, is I left Villa at fifteen, um, having already played for Villa's reserve team at like fifteen, and then I went to Arsenal, expecting. For then, okay, I've played for Villa's reserve team. You know, I'm not going to play for for Arsenal's under 18s. I played for I played in that under 18s league for like two years already. Um, one year, you know, I wanted to make that next step, and they didn't push me enough. Um, and I was playing with the 18s, and you know, I was bored of it. It was it was just you know about signing big headed or arrogant. It was just too easy, and I just couldn't get my head around that. Um, and I wasn't ready for the first team. I wasn't good enough. I wasn't big enough, strong enough. I still had a lot to learn and a lot to prove. Um, but I wanted to be with the first team more. And they didn't give me false promises because they never said, like, you're going to be the first team every day or this is how many times you're going to be with the first team. But I definitely wasn't training and in and around with the first team as much as I should have been. Um, yeah, it was a really tricky time, um, obviously being away from home and being away from my family and just being a, a young kid like in a big city, um, just like being at Arsenal, like with all these first team players, the coaches, it's just, it can be quite scary. And I don't think I realised it at the time, but looking back now, it was, it was, it was a difficult time for me. And it obviously didn't go the way I would have hoped because obviously I'd, I'd want to be playing in, in Arsenal's first team and, and for the premiership. And um, that just didn't happen. Yeah. It's, it's really difficult because, as I say, you know, it's it's almost like living a double life, if you know what I'm trying to say. So on the outside, everyone's looking at you thinking, you know, he plays for Arsenal, he's living every kid's dream. And in the inside, what you, you have to live every day. You know, it's it's not always a movie. It's not always glamorous in terms of what you're going through. Um, so what would you say was the was the biggest lesson that you did learn at Arsenal? Obviously, it was the, it was the Wenger era, whether or not that's obviously within your playing ability or, you know, just more life lessons that you've took on to the to the rest of your career and moving forward. What would you say was one of the biggest things that you learned at your time at Arsenal? I don't know if it would have been at, when I was at Arsenal or when I'd gone on loan and been at, um, you know, clubs like Barnsley and Oxford. Um, I think I learned my most there rather than being at Arsenal. I was still an Arsenal player. That doesn't really answer your question. But when I went out on loan, it was just a massive wake-up call, just that, like, like you could be however good you are with, with the football. But if you're not, um, if you're not effective, if you don't affect the game or... Like there would just be, I'd see a lot of players that I'd look at them in training or in games and just think, I'm miles better than him, um, like technically wise, but like they'd get, they'd score and assist. And then, you know, there was me, like I'd look really nice. I'd look really good, but I wouldn't affect the game. I wouldn't score or assist. Um, so I definitely learned that, you know, if, you, if you're not effective and you're not scoring and assisting or affecting and get the game and just managers just won't play you. Yeah. And I just realised how hard it is to be a professional footballer and play, you know, when there's actually stuff on the line, when you're getting paid, when you, you know, lads are paying for mortgages, um, like they're playing for their families. And, you know, with 23s football, it's just so easy, like mentally. And, um, you know, there's, there's no competition. Like you play against other 23s team and if you lose, it's just, it's not that deep. But like if these guys, if you, when you're out on loan or playing in, in like League One, like if you lose, like there's bonuses they miss out on, or you know if lads are playing for their livelihoods, we all are. Um, so it it was definitely a massive wake up call. The thing that you said there, obviously going out on loan and and really getting a taste of w what it's like, you know, in, in all in all areas of, of of the game. And one big aspect of your career is obviously you've you've been abroad to play football. And what I really wanted to ask, and I I do tend to ask the guests that I've had on that have had the experience of going abroad. A little bit in terms of what you've just said there about the loans that you've had. How did that help you in, in, in your development? And was it something that you enjoyed and, and almost looked back at as something that you needed at the time? Yeah, definitely. Because like I mentioned earlier about playing like under 18s and under 21s football, it's, you know, I was bored of it. And I think most players, they get to a stage where they've played in the academy and played in the 
played under 21 football, they just get bored of it and they need, we need that, all players need that first team football, that first team experience. Um, I've got the question now. What was the question? <laughs> uh, so it just in terms of obviously being abroad uh, thanks for that as well that will definitely make the little uh, the little advertisement uh, when, when when this podcast comes out so thanks for that mate but uh, no just in terms of the de- like the development and, and going abroad for someone you're still young now for me anyway so never mind back then so for someone to go and make that decision how much did it benefit you and as I say was it the, the right call at the time for you where you were in your career yeah it- it's you need to go out on loan or play with your you know first team like there's only so long you can play 21 football because to a certain point you just you don't get anything out of it anymore um but i think i went out on loan too early i just wasn't so i went out on loan to barnsley at 17 and then after four months three months i got sent back to arsenal just because i was falling out with players and um I didn't fall out the manager, but I just couldn't understand why I wasn't playing. Um, and that would frustrate me. And So the manager sent me back to, to Arsenal um, and I just wasn't ready mentally. Um, I was still a kid, like although ability-wise, like um, I was ready. But like like I said, you, it's, it's a different game. Like um, it's a completely different kettle of fish if you play in 21s and like in League One. Um, where it just means so much more than the season late. But the, the problem with that is because I needed to go out on loan because I was bored of 21's football. I wasn't getting anything out of it. I didn't get on with the Arsenal coaches. So it just wasn't that like, a good environment for me to be in. And the only option was to go out on loan. Um, but it is what it is. Like it's all a massive, it's part of my journey, you know, um, nothing is perfect. And and it, it does make you who you are today. Um, without maybe without you even realising. So, like, I wouldn't take it back. I wouldn't go back in time and and change it, but I probably wasn't ready until I was probably about 19 when I went out to Holland, and and that was a really good experience. I went to Go Ahead Eagles and played pretty much every game. Like, that club is is just a really great club, proper family club, working club, um, and... And they loved they loved me as a player because they weren't kind of used to that. They they were used to like people just working really hard and and fighting. And then obviously I was I came in with 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 a little bit different, so I was appreciated uh, massively there. And it was what I needed for myself and um, for my confidence and for my career. I just needed to go and play and get a load of games into me. And then that's when I I signed um, for another club in Holland in the summer. What are the aspirations now moving forward? You've got the experience now of being at the big club at early age. You've got the experience of playing week in, week out, as well as being abroad. It almost seems like from an outside point of view anyway, you've got a lot of things now to, to your game, as well as the ability that's obviously always been there. So where are you at now in terms of obviously being at Morecambe? And, and what are the aspirations with the club moving forward? Um, So I signed from January until the end of the season. Um, It was just to get back, really, and because... The problem is when you go abroad, unless you like rip it up, you kind of get them forgotten about a little bit. And like, I'll hold my hands up. I didn't rip it up um, this time round in in Holland, um, which happens. You know, it wasn't, it didn't go the way I, I wanted it to, and um, hoped it hoped it to. Um, so it was just get get my get my face back in England, um, so that next season I can kick on again, whether it's here at Morecambe or another club, but I just need, I want some stability and just a place where I can really um, show people what I can do and just get some consistency, get a load of games. Um, and just, like I say, just some stability, like um, just a, a bit of a home in football um, where I can just enjoy my football. And, and and you know, I'm, I'm still hungry and I'm still... Um, I still have my aspiration. I want to play in the Premier League. Um, however, that however long that takes, however my journey looks, that is is still my goal. Um, I just have to trust that God's plan is perfect and His timing is perfect, um, and trust Him, and just keep playing and keep believing in myself. 
Do you know what? It's it's brilliant to hear that kind of answer because for all that you've been through for your career, you know, it's it it must have be it's, it's so difficult for me to even think about going through stuff like that and and not really be almost feeling like you can explain to the world because obviously with footballers, you know, there's always scope on them. There's always concentration on them. And one slip up, you know, people don't forget that kind of thing. And it, it's such a difficult place to sort of be in. And, you know, as as you've sort of mentioned throughout a little bit, you know, the, the mental side of things isn't something really that, that people understand from the outside. And what I really want to talk about was obviously, so I, I messaged you a, a long, long, long time ago to come on and I didn't get a response. And and I'm not saying that, but, but because of anything, but, you know, I've had that plenty of times, but a couple of weeks after I've completely forgot about it. And you actually reached out to me and you messaged me and you said, mate, you know, look, I, I'm really sorry that I didn't get back to you mentally. You know, I just wasn't really in a great place. And for you to just reach out, you didn't have to do that. You know, I've, I've been ignored by plenty of people, a lot, a lot smaller than you in terms of, uh, you know, the, the the fame side of things but you know for, for you to to really reach out and just to let me know and you also said back then as well you know congratulations on on your career and stuff like that so you know that that was really the moment that I thought I've, I've just got to get this guy on because for it for you to just reach out to me when you really didn't need to you know I think that does say a lot about your character so from the mental side of things you know for, for everything that you've gone through in your career how difficult really is it to to sort of manage and, and navigate your way through through a footballing career and and sort of juggle everything? Now, obviously, you've got family, you've got kids to think about. You know, it's it's a situation really where a career, although it's as I've said, the glitz and glam is always going to be there with being a footballer and saying that you you know you do that for a living. But how how has it been to to deal with the mental side and and the lows of the lows? You know, to to feel like you know there's there's not a lot of hope in the future and, and stuff like that. How have you dealt with that and and what are the lessons that you've took potentially to pass on to, you know, young footballers out there who are who are struggling with similar things in their careers? Yeah, it's it's really tough. Um, and that's why um I gave my life to Jesus um and became a Christian. Um God Jesus revealed himself to me, um, like through people. And just when I was going through like a sticky situation, like um not situation, just like off the pitch. I just wasn't happy. Um, the thing is with football, like, especially with me um, being like the, a wonder kid, you know, there's a lot of pressure. And like, ever since I was like five or six, I was good at football. And everyone kind of knew that, um, especially being, you know, back home in Coventry. And like, when I was at Aston Villa, you know, I was the best player in my age group. Um, and maybe even the the, age, the year above, um, apart from Jack Grealish, who was who I've played with, um, who's doing all right. Um, but yeah, I was known as um, yeah, just that the footballer. Um, everywhere I went, school, you know, going out, going to parties, going and going to clubs. I was always looked at as as the footballer, and and like it does get to your head um, without even knowing it, and. I had like a lot of good things happen to me quite fast, like at a young age. And like people will say it doesn't affect them, but like 100% does affect them. And, you know, I have amazing parents um, who, who kept me grounded, but still it, it takes its toll on you. So like I really struggled with, I really struggled with, oh, if I don't play in the premiership, like I've failed. Um, and who am I? Like, you know, that was all I wanted to do was play at the, playing the Premiership, playing the Champions League, play at the highest level. And um, I struggled with that mentally because obviously my career like wasn't going the way I seen it, you know, where, the way I wanted it to go. Um, you know, and there was like, it was going up and then going down. And then like, it's just, and it's not a straight, for some people it's kind of a straight path, um, but everyone's um, journey is different. So what I did, I did struggle with that mentally. Um, and that is this is that's where my faith um, and my relationship with Jesus has a massive, um, you know, part in my life because, like, I don't know if I'd be able to do it without Him, because um, He just gives me so much strength and peace. And you know, my identity is not a footballer. It's not just a footballer. First, it's a it's a child of God, and then it's a dad, a husband, a son, a brother, a friend, and then a footballer. But when before it was just. I'm a footballer and that's it. And, you know, if I fail or if I do well, then that is who I am. Um, so now I've come a long way. Um, I was just very obsessed with, with 
being the best and, and it it gets too much it takes over your life and you know I couldn't really deal with it um and I didn't want control I didn't want football to to control me anymore to control who who I was um as a person um but my advice for young kids to be would be um I don't know you know it's it's a really tricky question um give your life to Jesus and then everything will be fine um but you know I know not every every kid is going to want to follow Jesus and become a Christian just don't get too high and don't get too low and and also um you know listen to good people um and and stay close to them because there is a lot of you know not a nice people in football um and believe in yourself and don't give up like the cliches um but never stop believing in yourself and and never let football you know take over who you are as a person because we're all so much bigger than that and more than that and even like professionals today um like they're so much more than footballers and i think a lot of players don't realize that It's just brilliant to hear you talk and uh, really open up about this thing because you know I think uh, you know as you've said there you know and, and I'm I'm guilty of it as well you know before we even had the conversation you know I knew who you were and it was as as you've said there you know he was the footballer he's the footballer and you know he plays for this club and stuff like that and like you say you know as a kid you don't have the the, the brain or the knowledge at the time to really you know digest and and compute sort of what's going on around you and obviously. I think what I've noticed as well is, um, you know, getting into sort of, you know, the the media side of things and, you know, put yourself in the in the public eye a little bit, you know, it, it almost sort of reveals to you a little bit, doesn't it, in terms of people's intentions around you. And as you've mentioned there, you know, the the, the danger of having, you know, negative people or, or, or bad noises around you at the time. So I think one thing I did want to sort of talk about really is that kind of outside noise, you know, Unfortunately, as you as you know yourself, you know the world that we live in. People are just sort of preying on your downfall, which is it's just just a, such a shame, isn't it? I think anyone that I see, certainly anyone from Coventry, you know, you you want them to excel. This is the city that we're from, but unfortunately, it, it almost feels like you know people are just sort of waiting for you to to have a knockback or you know go down in your career, which I think says a lot more about the other people than than the person they're thinking about. So how how do you deal with? And I'm sure it's changed over the years, but how have you dealt with the the, the the times and the occasions where people have questioned you or, or doubted you or, or really just thrown a bit of negative shade at you. How how have you sort of coped with that and what are your sort of coping mechanisms for situations like that if you were to sort of go through them again now? Um to be honest, like Coventry is actually quite a good city for like I haven't had a lot of situations where um people have, you know, been negative about me or um I, I, I just haven't. Obviously, there's the odd one or two people that, you know, might say something, but I just don't take any notice of it. You know, I don't really go out. I don't I don't have many friends. I have a couple of few friends. Um, like I just go for a walk, my missus and my son and with my family. Um, so I don't I'm not in really situations where people can say anything to me. I just I live quite a simple, quiet life. Um and if people do say anything, I just, you know, it's kind of in one ear and out the other. Um, that person doesn't mean anything to me, you know. As long as my family are proud of me and um, I know what they say about me, um, and that's that's all that matters. For firstly, thanks a lot anyway for obviously discussing that kind of thing. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you don't really do this kind of thing very often. So for you to come on and not just talk about your career, but also, you know, the difficulties, I think is, uh, as again, you know, as... as uh, when you reached out to me over over WhatsApp, you know, I think it says again a lot about your character. But in terms of something a little bit more, you know, lighthearted, if 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 you look back at your career now, go on, throw some names at me in terms of players that you've uh, you've come up against that you've thought, wow, because I know you've obviously played against. I think it was did you play against Martin Odegaard when you were in Holland? Is that correct? Because I'm sure that he was out there yeah. at a similar time that you were. Um, so even you know players like that now, you know. What kind of players that you have you come up against firstly that you've thought, you know, whether it's on the pitch or you've been watching them and you've just thought that they're special? Um, it was probably when I was younger, when I played I played for Ireland against um Belgium. 
and then, I don't know if you know um, Bak- Bakali. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Similar age to you, wasn't he? He was. Yeah, he was ridiculous. He was just so good. And they had Charlie Masunda as well. Um, Andreas Pereira. Yeah. That team was just ridiculous. Um, but no, I played against Ajax for Willem Tway. Um, and they had De Jong, Ziyech, De Ligt, like just some Tadic, crazy players. Um, I have played against some some good players, but probably the best um, is probably De Jong. He was really, really good. Wow, well, uh, there's been there's been a few whispers at the moment that you might be joining Man United, and after you've said that, you know, I think uh, I think I'm gonna hope that that happens. But uh, in terms of the players that you played with. You know, you, you've you've been all over. You've been across Europe. You've been in England at what arguably one of the biggest clubs in the country. You know, you've you've had the experience of playing against, well, playing with, sorry, some some incredible talent. Who for you does does stand out as a a player that you've that you've played with? You know, you've you've teamed up with, and you've just thought this player is absolute dynamite. Um, I played with Alexandra Izak. Um, he isn't doing too badly either at the moment, is he? Yeah, he's he's really really good. Um, he was someone that you can tell that was going to play at the top and going to play at the highest level. Obviously, I played with Jack Grealish when I was younger. Um, you know, I, tra- I didn't play much of Arsenal's first time. I played one game in a friendly in Singapore. So I don't really count that as like playing with them, but just in the likes of training, um, Alexis, Alexis Sanchez, Santi Carzola, um, Jack Wilshire, they were just all players that you know, I just loved watching, um, and it was it was amazing to to see them up close and personal, and um, just how good they are. Um, but other than that, um, I think yeah, Alexander Isak, he was. But it's really good to see um, Joe Willock doing so well um, because he's kicked on massively, and um, it was a, it's a surprise actually. And I think Joe would probably say that in, himself because at Arsenal he he, he had a tough time. Um, and then just all of a sudden, he's just at Newcastle. He just looks like a different player. Um, so it's it's great to see. Yeah, I think uh, it's just crazy to think, you know. And I don't think you actually realise at the time when you're going through it, you know, the types of players that you're playing with or against. And it's it's just such a. It, I always enjoy that little bit of a of a podcast because it it takes the 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 special guests that are back into their memory lane, if you like. But. Uh, what looking forward now? Obviously, we've we've looked back enough. Looking forward now, what can we expect in the future from Dan Crowley? Not just playing. Obviously, you know the, the time will come for all of us to retire. And with footballers, unfortunately, you can't go on to your fifty or sixty like most other professions have. You know, it's um it's certainly a difficult one in terms of what you're going to do next. But what can we expect? Is it something certainly if you know the time does come? Uh, hopefully, a long, long time because I still feel you've got a lot to offer in the game. But after that, not just obviously your playing ability, but um, you know your knowledge of the game. Is it something that you're going to put to use in terms of staying around the game, or after you know some of the experiences that you've had in football, are you sort of just going to be a player? And once that's done, just just uh, move on with your life. What kind of sort of uh, sort of journey do you think Dan Crowley will go on after football uh, and the and the boots are hung up? I don't know, you know, it's a tricky one. I do, like being a manager, does, um, I do have interest in that. But because I've been through a lot and seen a lot, um, like I do want to have an impact on, you know, on people's lives and I do want to help people. I, I don't know what that looks like. Um, I do think I'd be a good manager, but it depends what, what God wants me to do. Um you know, I, I live for him now and, and my family and um, it's just wherever he, he takes me, you know, as people, we all have our own dreams and um, aspirations, but, you know, he might have other plans for me. Um, so I don't know. It's, it is exciting and I have thought about it because I'm not getting any younger. I'm not, you know, that young kid anymore. I'm 25 now. So you do start to think about it as you get older. But yeah, who knows? Maybe coaching. Maybe being a manager, I don't know yet.
Yeah, do you know what? I think that's a that's such a good answer because I think what you what you said about your time at Arsenal was how much pressure you put on your future, how much expectation you put on your own shoulders, never mind anyone else, and and mm. and how much of an impact that had on you negatively of of how much pressure you've put on for you now to come full circle and just to say, look, where wherever God takes me, that will that will be the journey that I go down. I think that again massively says stuff about you. And I've just got one very very final question um, before I let you go because I know how busy you are. And I think this is quite fitting, really, in terms of the podcast that we've we've spent the time talking about. Is Dan Crowley genuinely happy in life? Yeah, I have like so many things to be grateful for in my life. I have an amazing family, a beautiful wife, son. Um, you know, I'm healthy. My family are healthy. I have good friends. Um, you know, I play football every day, like whether that's, you know, in League One, in the Championship, in the Premiership, you know, I play football every day for a living and it is tough and there is like hard times, but, you know, it is a is a privilege and a blessing to to be doing what I'm doing. So, like, I think happy is, happiness, like, what is happiness? Um, like, and I think, I think happiness comes and goes because, like, you know, I have a game tomorrow. If we lose, I'm not going to be happy. Um, you know, if, if we win, you know, and I play well, I'm going to be happy. But, like, I have joy um, and I do have an amazing life. So, yeah, I am I am happy. It's a, I think that's a very fitting way to end the podcast. But, Dan, honestly, I can't thank you enough, to be honest. I think even looking back at it, you know, when, when you were at Arsenal years and years and years ago now, you know, without even realizing i think at that time it gave inspiration certainly to me to think you know don't don't dream small don't dream realistic if someone at that young age can play for one of the biggest clubs in the world and you know really push for their dreams then you know everyone can get somewhere if they really want to so not only thank you for being an inspiration but also thank you for having the conversation and really opening up i think you've you've sort of you know, exposed really how how difficult football can be. But the fact that you're on the other side now, and it seems anyway that mentally you've you've never been stronger. You know, you've never been more content in life. You know, with a with a family. You know, you you really seem like you've got your head much more screwed on your shoulders in terms of you know not putting so much pressure on yourself. And I think that's again a massive credit to you and and, and the people around you really to. To, to come full circle, as I say, and, and really, you know, be in a position where you feel like you can give your all and in a positive way. So thanks a lot and and a massive congratulations for everything that you've gone through and to be out on the other side fighting and still motivated. So thanks a lot for everything. And I genuinely wish you nothing but happiness and success for the rest of your career and beyond. Thank you very much, mate. I really appreciate it. No worries and at keep all. keep going yourself. Yeah, no. Uh, listen, mate. I'll uh, I'll certainly be one to try and race you to the top. We'll both get there, mate. We'll keep our heads down, and hopefully, we'll uh, as I say, meet at the top table and have a nice glass of wine while we're there. But uh, thanks a lot, Dan. Honestly, I really, do, really do appreciate it once again. And um, unfortunately, that's pretty much all we've got time for. As I say, a massive thank you to Dan for taking his time out of the day to jump on and, and talk all things football. I really hope that you've took as much as I have from watching this podcast. Please be sure to like, subscribe. Follow on all the social media, you know the drill by now for more content by the content.